What's up guys, I am Ian, and in today's video, I go over one of my favorite shots I've ever taken. For the driver, it more so has to do with the laws of physics. Because if you notice in this photo... But first, now I don't know if you can tell, but I am not in my room at all. I am moving, but right now I am in Atlanta. This is a hotel room, that is the outside. I'm on the fifth floor. I am in Atlanta covering the second round for Formula Drift of the 2024 season. <laughs> Welcome out to Road Atlanta. I'm here for two different, well, three different clients. But that's that's why I've got all this stuff just kind of out right now. And that's not even counting all of the mess that I've got over there. And no, you're not going to see. Now, the reason I'm taking some time to do this right now is to do a little lens highlight. Most people, when they think of motorsport photography, they think of massive super primes, like 300s, 400s, 500s. And especially if you're doing like MotoGP, 600 millimeter prime lenses and don't get me wrong they're fantastic and i'm not knocking them whatsoever but as you will see later in the video those are not the only ways to get good shots in fact for today's lens highlight one of my favorite lenses to shoot motorsport is actually one of my least favorite lenses in general the 16 to 35. the reason it is my least favorite honestly i i feel that it's such a specific look that outside of motorsport, the only real, from my perspective, like use case is talking head. And don't get me wrong, plenty of need for it. And it's it's pretty decent in portraiture. It obviously works. But for me, it seemed like it was a niche lens until I actually started to force myself to bring more than just my 70 to 200 or a 500 prime. Th this is how you get better. You force yourself into a scenario where you're not getting paid so that you can you know, test everything. You see what the limits are. You see what you can do, what you can't do, and, and you tweak and you figure out all of the routes that your tools can take you. And at the end of the day, that's what these are. These are tools to tell your story and a lens is just a specific perception of your story. The reason why 16 to 35 for motorsport has become one of my two favorite lenses that I've ever used is because you get such, for lack of better terms, you get a sense of distortion that you don't really get in other lenses because our eyes very closely mimic a 35 millimeter range. But if you're shooting all the way zoomed out, that's a 16. And there is some, some warping on the edge and I purposely don't take it out. And we get this phenomenal sense of like circular world of motorsport when, when in reality we think of motorsport as just a straight line, just and 16 to 35 forces me to think differently and shoot differently. I have to get much closer. If I wanna do, you know, pans, I have to move much faster because think about it. If you are using, you know, a 7200 or a 500 prime, you're far back and in relevance to your subject, when you're doing a panning shot, you don't actually have to move that fast. That's the nature of physics. It's the dynamism, it's the relationship between you as the shooter and the car, the subject. The farther it is, the less you have to move. But if you're using a really wide lens and your motorsport subject, i.e. your car, is really fucking close, <laughs> you have to turn really fucking fast. You really do. But it's not just hard when you're doing panning shots. It's hard in general, whether they're, they're medium distance away, like 100 feet or super close, obviously, especially when they're super close. And to talk more about that, like I promised, one of the reasons why it is one of my favorites is because the driver in this car is actually none other than Larry Chen. And if you don't know who that is, it's okay. He is a very prominent and very sought after motorsport and automotive photographer and kind of videographer as well. He's known for working with the likes of Motor Trend and Hot Rod, Ken Block when he was still alive, God rest his soul, Formula Drift for over a decade. It's phenomenal all of the work that Larry Chen has done. So like I said, that's just one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite photos that I have taken thus far. And realistically, I could just list off all of the settings that my camera was on, as well as the gear that was used and let it be that. But that's not exactly how you get the shot. So this track is a very special track in Southern California. It is actually called Horse Thief Mile. It is a part of the Willow Springs 
raceway area. So in order for you to even be where I was, people who are running whatever the event is for that day needs to both apply and get approved for the media insurance for, you know, the day. Then you, as a media personnel, whether it's photo or video, but again, I'm a photographer, you have to sign the media waiver with the people running the event. And then to make sure that everyone can see you, including God, you need a bright neon media vest. Now, once all of these boxes are checked off, you're allowed onto, not onto the track itself, but in the track area, basically everywhere that the tarmac or cement is not. So all of the dirt, all of the bushes, all of the the really dried out trees, you're allowed all of there. And honestly, once you are out there, it is just a matter of trust because the drivers understand that you have gone through all of these processes and more likely than not that you have been at least to a few tracks as a media personnel. They trust you to some extent to just understand how not to be in the way. But then that trust goes both ways because you as a media personnel also trust that the drivers know what they are doing. And if you have that level of trust, like I would to Larry Chen, because I know his background, not exactly because I know him personally, we've met a couple times, but I trust his understanding of his vehicle. And so I therefore trust his capability. But then there is kind of a third level of trust as well. And that doesn't have to do with yourself or the driver. It more so has to do with the laws of physics. Because if you notice in this photo, Again, he's going downhill. I, at the time that this photo was taken, am basically staring at him. And we are parallel in terms of our plane of existence on the track. And he's going downhill to the left of me. And all of his momentum is going that way. And he can't physically come into me any further than he is. So if, God forbid, he had messed up. Laws of physics would dictate that he is just going to keep going down and not actually come back uphill. And now here's where we get to the technical aspect of it. Now that you understand the story behind the photo. I was using my Sony a7R5 camera shooting on CF Express A cards. Not that that really matters. I was using my 16 to 35 G Master uh, Mark 1 and I have the lens zoom all the way out. So it is actually at 35 mil, but I am only a about, I would say, six yards away from the edge of that track. I will admit, <laughs> scarily close. And then the rest of my settings were as follows. My shutter speed was at 1 2500th. I was shooting at f4.5 and ISO 640. Now the reason that those numbers are kind of all over the place is because I was using my Polar Pro variable ND filter, the two to five stop, and I was at a four stop on this. I will admit I could have done maybe a three stop on this and lowered the ISO, but I was already at a four stop shooting a bunch of other things. Didn't see the reason to really shift any settings around because as you can tell, when we zoom in, all of this stuff is pretty well frozen, especially considering I'm only about 18 feet from him, maybe even less. And yes, even though my shutter is that fast, I did feel the need to kind of pan because of how close he was. I understand the relationship between subject and shooter changes drastically depending on how close you are to each other. And because our distance was really not much at all, uh, I felt that if I had been stationary and not moved my camera and just let him fly by, even at a 2500th for shutter, I feel like there still may have been some motion blur and I just didn't want that. I wanted him frozen, absolutely frozen. And I feel like I did a great job. I love that this uh, burst of him coming down he was, you can see with the front wheel, he was kind of off track, but I love it because it allowed for things to get thrown up even more. And this is not a clean track already. Horse Thief Mile is not by any means like a clean track. No one really comes around and like brushes it off. It's, it's not like a race track. It, it's a, it's a grimy, dirty, grungy track. And so there's already particles and rubber and, and, albeit even tiny little pebbles here and there all across it. So him being a little off track just 
added to the feel and the grittiness of the shots. And I honestly love it. So, as you can tell, it is now nighttime. I got all the way to Subway to get my delicious chicken sandwich, only to realize I had not actually say goodbye to you guys. So thank you again for watching. Now, I don't think you want to watch or listen to me eat my delicious sandwich. So this is me saying get the f out.